What are they up to if they're striking the U.S. so much there? So uh, these are groups that are affiliated with Hezbollah or other groups in the region. They are uh, conducting resupply, reconnaissance operations. They're building their forces against Israel. Um, they're supporting uh, Bashar Assad to some extent. Uh, the Israelis go against them, and our mission there is uh, to support our allies, uh, both our Kurdish allies working against ISIS, and also we collect in information and intelligence. Now, w why this is particularly disturbing is when they're able to bring accurate targeting against the United States and inflict casualties, uh, this raises the, the, the level of risk for our personnel in the region. Attacks, mortars, a mortar falls inaccurately and so forth, that's an attack. A drone that hits a, 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 a barracks facility and takes out five service members, that's a different order of magnitude. So we're retaliating. The question is, will we have to actually defend against these drones in order to maintain our footprint in the region? We don't want to do that, obviously. Uh, we don't want to escalate against Iran, as the Secretary of Defense said. Uh, so this is raising the risks for us and creating some policy dilemmas. If it does create this new level, as you're describing, if the Iranian proxies can't hit U.S. troops with these precision weapons, what then do you do about it? Is this precision strike, so-called by U.S. officials, in retaliation enough? Well, we don't know. I mean, this really goes back to what the Iranian intent is. Can they keep us off balance enough uh, and the Israelis off balance enough to build up their forces, maintain their leverage against Israel, uh, their relations with Syria? Uh, these are all variables that are that are evaluated by the Iranians, and then they determine the next course of action. Would they like to drive us out of the region? Absolutely. That will put them greater control in the region, also reduce our ability to support Iraq and give them greater influence there. It's all part of Iran's a quest for regional hegemony. And we're there to block it in a very, and we're doing so in a very efficient, safe manner. We don't need these kind of drone strikes. Uh, you know, Iran is raising, it's raising the bar. It's got the relationship with Russia and China's just uh, helped it restore relationships. So uh, we're entering a new era in the region. Talk to me about that wider picture because Iran's got its fingers in Ukraine also. The Russians are using Iranian drones to attack the Ukrainians here. This is, this is a trite, and there's a possibility they're going to build a factory in Ukraine, or uh, in, maybe in Crimea or in Russia to be able to manufacture more drones there. So, uh, you know, this is all part of Iran's quest to return to great power status. It's it's the regional hegemony, and they're using Russia. Uh, they're using the relationship with China. They feel a little bit more confident, uh, and uh, they're still uh, struggling uh, with enormous internal resistance. Uh, these protests that began last fall are, are still continuing to some extent inside Iran. The regime is not stable, and uh, it projects itself and builds its reputation by these kinds of actions externally. We're getting some new information in after a U.S. contractor was killed in a drone strike in Syria overnight. The Pentagon believes it was an Iranian-affiliated drone that hit a facility housing U.S. personnel. Five U.S. service members were injured and an additional U.S. contractor was wounded. We are learning that all of the U.S. service members injured are in stable condition, so that's good news. President Biden authorized what the U.S. calls a precision airstrike in response against facilities believed to be used by the group that they think is responsible for the attack. CNN's Nick Robertson is with me now. And Nick, I was surprised to learn there have been 78 drone strikes since 2021 from these Iranian proxy groups. Um, that's an awful lot, but this one was fatal and deadly and elicited a response creating a pretty delicate situation. Yeah, it does. I mean, consider the delicate situation in this way, and there are many ways to consider it, of course, but one part of the puzzle at the moment is the United States trying to pull off a deal to get some American citizens that have been illegally held in, in Iranian jails for a number of years now, trying to get them out. And that does appear to be getting reasonably close to fruition. Uh, the Iranians seem to want to make it happen. Just a couple of weeks ago, they tweeted out that actually the deal had been done. The White House said, no, that's not the, not the case. But point being, 
that's going on in the background. Um, the Iranians want something out of this. Uh, President Biden definitely wants something out of it as well. No one's going to compromise their position. But of course, an escalation around this attack, and there isn't an escalation at the moment. But if there was, that could put that sort of deal in jeopardy. Of course, that would be worrying for the family members. But of course, you have as well, uh, you know, Iran trying to maintain its influence in Syria where the bigger diplomatic picture is changing. Uh, President Assad uh, has sort of been welcomed by some of his Arab neighbors. There's a rapprochement that's going on that came out in part of the, of the earthquake in Syria recently, the support that was provided. So that diplomatic door is opening. Um, could be the Iranians are worried that they see their Arab neighbors, long unfriendlies towards them. Uh, returning back to, to Syria and, and squeezing them out of space. There are so many potential dynamics here. I don't think you can put one finger on, on any specific one, but all of that is in the background here. But, but the risk of escalation, that, that, that's real. Again, the, the Iranian proxy groups have been doing this for some time. Is there anything that the United States do, could do, or maybe would be willing to do is the better question, to stop it? I think there's always that concern with Iran that uh, as you push them in one place, uh, then they up something somewhere else. They have a lot of proxies. Uh, everyone at the moment is talking about how uh, their proxies, the Houthis in Yemen, have dialed back their violence, uh, sending missiles into, into Saudi Arabia. Um, if you press down on the Iranians in Syria, do they get their proxies there to start up? Um, do their proxies in Hezbollah in their proxies Hezbollah in Lebanon start up and create uh, increased tensions with with Israel? There's any way that that, that Iran can, can ramp up, but primarily uh, their beef, if you will, their issue with the United States is they want them out of the region and will continue through proxies to try to attack, to try to diminish the will to stay. But, but the US troops in Syria are there predominantly to tackle ISIS. Um, and ISIS until recently has been more deadly against US forces in Syria than the Iranians have. Um, again, it's a very, very complex situation. But to your point, 78 attacks since 2021, that's an average of one almost every 10 days that's significant and it can't be overlooked and I think that's very clearly why there was such a fast response not just that the president said yes do something quickly that there was a target list ready to go to you've seen in the video those sort of secondary explosions and in the past when there have been response strikes by the United States they've targeted ammunition dumps we don't know what was hit this time but it looked like it could have been it's a very good point it's apparently a target list at the ready there. Nick Robertson, thank you so much for helping us understand this.